Hello everybody and welcome to Victoria's Cantina, where today we're taking a look at the latest wave of Hasbro Star Wars The Vintage Collection line. Now I got two cases of this latest wave from Entertainment Earth. You get two Hunter, you get uh, two uh, Cassie and Andor, Aldani Mission, you get one Clone Trooper, you get uh, one Star Killer, you get one Cal Kestis, and you get one Admiral Piet. I kind of feel like maybe it should have been two Clone Troopers instead of two Andors. But in any case, it is what it is. So firstly, if you turn into our Victoria's Cantina, Cantina Social Hour 10th Anniversary Special. Thank you so much for doing that. It was a blast. Really enjoyed hanging out with everybody. Um, but now we got a review. Okay, review time. So we're going to take a look at these guys in and out of the packaging. So we'll go ahead and start things off with Cal Kestis from Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Now this is actually a carry forward from the previous wave, which is really cool. That's something they used to do a lot of back in the day, and uh, I'm really glad that Hasbro's thinking forward a little bit to the game actually coming out pretty soon. And, uh, you know, people are going to want their Cal Kestis figures, so it's really cool that he is here. Uh, card looks really nice. As you can see, you got Cal in a very video game uh, looking image there with BD-1 on his back. He's got his lightsaber ignited. I love the green backfill that they did on this one. And the back of the figure shows the previously released figures. Nothing from the current wave. Um, so it's basically just a straight carry forward. Here's Cal out of the packaging and really a stunning looking figure. Um, you know, this is one of those things about where we are in the current stage of the vintage collection where detail and likenesses and articulation are just top notch when they do completely brand newly told figures. And um, this is gorgeous. Now, fans have been asking for Cal for a very long time now. Um, especially since uh, Jedi Fallen Order, which you know, everybody loved that game, and I loved that game, and it was just awesome. Now we have Jedi Survivor, um, so I would still really love a Fallen Order version of this figure, uh, this character, but um, you know, I'm glad that we have this for the time being. Um, he just looks exquisite. Like That likeness is really, really nice. Um, the sculpting on this whole figure, really, the whole silhouette is really nicely done. You can see he's got that extra lightsaber hilt that I have attached there, pegged into his belt. He's also got his lit lightsaber, um, which looks really nice. I really like his unique um, lightsaber hilt there. Looks great. He's also got a blaster, which I have holstered right there. Uh, the boots look really nice. Um, just a really nicely detailed, really nicely sculpted figure. And I think for me, the proportions really stand out as looking very natural, as looking very realistic. Um, so that is really, really cool. The articulation is in line with modern TVC, the latest and greatest. So you have things like the ball socket, shoulders, um, insert molded elbows and wrists. You can see the joints there. Um, the torso is also uh, on a nice uh, joint there. Mostly swivels, you don't really get up or down on it. Um, but then you have those latest style hips there, the barbell hips. You've also got the um, ball joint and knees, the um, rocker ankles, uh, and then the ball jointed head, which the head, you know, always important for me. Um, in this case, you do get some pretty nice uh, movement with it as far as side to side goes up and down a little bit. Um, I am pretty happy with, with the figure's articulation. Um, he, so as far as the blaster goes, this is basically what it is. Uh, it just slips out like that. And it's a very simple uh, looking pistol. So it, it fits in very nicely into his holster, just like that. Uh, again, the lightsaber pegs on right there. And then you also get BD-1. Now, who didn't love BD-1 in this game? Uh, I loved BD-1. And this is just a great little accessory because it looks great. Um, you can rotate him here at the head. Really nice movement there. And then also his legs um, move forward and back, which is really nice. So such a cool little um, accessory slash um, minifigure packing. Next up, we have another video game figure. That's two video game figures in a single mainline wave, which is kind of cool. This is Starkiller, Vader's Apprentice from the Expanded Universe. Of course, it is from the Force Unleashed 2. This was actually one that in their fan poll a couple years back, placed pretty highly on fans' wish list to see repackaged. So uh, it's kind of nice that they're releasing it. Weequay was actually the winner, and that is coming out pretty soon here too, if not already, I think. I think it is shipping from Amazon. But it's nice that they're also doing Star Killer at the same time. Card back is pretty similar to what we had before. So you have the video game um, film out there 
uh, or game out from the video game. You can see he's got his dual sabers. And the back has been updated to reflect the most current figures from TVC. As you can see, he is 100, so he is back, uh, even though we're in the later numbers now, of course. Here's Starkiller out of the packaging. And like I said, this has been released before. This is actually the third time it's been released because apart from the first TVC release, it came out in the Black Series 3 and 3 quarter inch line uh, around 2013, 2014, somewhere in that time frame. And um, I do own the other two versions. Now I do have hundreds upon hundreds of Star Wars figures and I tried to dig them up and I could not find them. Once I do locate them though, I will do some comparison um, photos of them that I'll throw on Instagram. Um, but as you can see, it is a pretty nice figure. Or at least it was really nice for its time. It hasn't really aged as well as I hoped it would. Uh, but in any case, it's great that it's back out for newer fans and collectors. The likeness isn't so bad and it actually really benefits from having photo reel this time around. It certainly it looks better than I remember it looking before um, but I think this is one case where maybe it would have benefited from a different head sculpt um, again it's it's not bad and it really is one of the better head sculpts uh, of TVC 1.0 um, but like I said it's just you know we're so far beyond this figure that this is the third release and it just hasn't really aged uh, as well as we might like and you know a brand new sculpt obviously would have been better but I wouldn't want them to do that because I'd rather have other characters and something like this that's not even really a thing anymore. I mean, The Force Unleashed, that's so long ago at this point, both versions of the game. Um, you can see the lightsaber hilts do peg in. Now, it's not the strongest, like, like the holes are kind of small, so you have to, like, really push them in. Um, the lightsabers themselves are nice, same ones that he had before. They don't match quite what he has in the packaging, um, but I presume that they do match uh, what's in the game. I don't really remember after all this time. Um, and he's wearing like a, an Imperial flight suit, which I think is really cool. Um, he's got this belt that kind of just moves up and down. It's connected to this, these leg pieces here. Um, and I do like the open piece right there. Um, it's, it's not a bad figure. It definitely was, like I said, great for its time. Um, but you know, again, we are really beyond it. So one thing that is cool about this guy is he does have some removable pieces so that you can customize him a little bit. Uh, I'm just going to pull these out and... Um, so essentially what you have here is this is the base figure, but if you wanted to put some of this other stuff on him, you could pull off his head. Yikes. Um, put this armor on. Put the head back on. There we go. And then he's also got this um, skirt piece that he comes with that you can also um, use. And you can see it does have holes there to clip the lightsabers in too. Um, I kind of forgot how this works. I think you just slide down on that there, that bottom piece, slide, 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 just like that. And we'll go ahead and put the other, um, the alternate, I don't even know what you call that, camera skirt piece on him, like that push 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 all right just like that that was a little more snug than i remember it being before but maybe that's just my memory like i said this was a really long time ago last i looked at this figure um but yeah it's a nice alternate look he also has some shoulder um or, or wrist thingies right here i'm trying to remember where those went i think they went here but don't yell at me in the comments if i'm wrong like i said it's been forever since i've played this game and since I've looked at this the original versions of this figure so I don't really remember but that looks good so <laughs> let's go with it um it's not bad um I, I don't know which look I prefer they're just different um, but it is nice that you have plenty of options that came with this figure articulation is basically um in line with TVC 1.0 so you, you know you, you only have the swivel hips that go forward and back of course they are blocked because I have this thing on there right now uh, you do have the ball joints at the shoulders, at the um, elbows, you have swivels at the wrists, you have ball joints at the knees, and then you have um, ball joints there at the ankles. So, you know, it's decent for its time. Um, and it's nice that it's back out because I know a lot of people wanted it again for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, that's Starkiller. We then have Hunter from the Bad Batch. It's been a long time coming, but they're finally doing some members of the Bad Batch. Kind of frustrating that Black Series already has them. I mean, I know I'm beating a dead horse there, but um, yeah, I mean, obviously, if you have Hunter, you got to have the rest of the team, right? And they haven't even announced or pipelined anything, I don't think. So 
um, particularly frustrating that, you know, Hunter might be a standalone for a long time. Now the image there is pretty nice. It's a pretty heroic image of Hunter. Definitely looks very Bad Batch animated, however, not really realistically interpreted. I do like the green that they used here. And as you can see, this is number 268 in the line. So Hunter, like I said, is really exciting to finally have. We've only had some like tertiary clones from the Bad Batch so far, and it's nice to have one of the main characters. But like I said, it torments me so much that the other, the other team members don't yet exist in this scale. And um, that's, you know, quite frustrating. But in any case, this is an awesome figure. Um, I'm really glad to have Hunter. I mean, he just looks awesome. Like, he just looks fantastic. Like, I'm really digging uh, everything about Hunter here. Like, the helmet looks great. The armor looks great. Just the color of the armor. But also the sculpting. It does have a very animated kind of look to it. Um, you can see like the skinny like torso and stuff, but so did the Black Series version. Um, I think that is deliberate and this will definitely fit in, I think, with your realistic clones too, um, either which way. It just looks great. Like I love like all the little details and the paints, the colors on there, the grays, the, the blacks, the reds. It just looks really nice. Um, we can go ahead and take his helmet off so you can see what his head looks like. And it's really nicely done. I think they did a really good job with it. Um, I like how they did the tattoo, like just the, the way they went about that. The eye paint looks great. Um, he's got like a little bit of a five o'clock shadow. The bandana looks awesome. Um, he just looks really nice. Like the hair, it looks like straight out of the Bad Batch um, TV show. So that's really nice. And the helmet itself, uh, it just slides right over his head really easily. It's very pliable. So I'm not worried about paint rub or anything like that. Sometimes that's a concern for me, but in this case, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. The backpack looks really nice. Um, you can um, pull it out. You can see that it only goes in one way. Uh, and then I really like like the little like skull that he has right there. It just looks really nice. It looks really nice, really nice print. Um, like I said, the colors are just great, really great. And the articulation is awesome. So he does have, you know, uh, the ball joint there at the head so really nice movement there um, the shoulders so these shoulder pads are connected to um, the top of the um, they kind of go underneath the uh, the shoulder armor here or the torso armor um, but they are very soft so they do not get in the way of posing the figure so you know very nice insert molded joints there uh, same here at the elbows um, the wrists are really nice uh, on this one um, you can actually go forward and back like that. Um, and then on this one, it goes up and down. So you can hinge it uh, either which which way. Torso joint, uh, really nice, um, pretty good movement there. He's got the nice barbell hips, thankfully. You can also rotate um, the thigh armor independently of his hips, uh, which is a nice touch too. Um, nice joints here, ball joints there at the, um, at the knees. You can see that. The, the armor for the knee pad is attached to his shin. Uh, and then, he, of course, he's got the rocker ankles too. So uh, all in all, just really nicely articulated. Um, for his guns, he's got like the smaller clone um, blaster pistol that we see with some of the ARC troopers. He's also got this nice um, gun right there that he uses in the show. And then there's also a knife that pulls out right there. And you just stick it in right there and it fits perfectly. Next up, we're going to have Cassie and Andor Aldani mission. So in the last wave, we got Cassie and Andor. So now we have another Cassie and Andor. Um, this one, though, is Aldani mission. Now, this is a controversial one because they did reuse legs from the Shore Trooper, which is inaccurate. And you can even see in the image there that they deliberately <laughs> did not show his legs. He didn't actually have that armor on his shin. So why they didn't use a different figure to source the legs from, I don't know. I do like the blue that they went with. Um, in this case, it's always interesting to see what they what colors they're going to use for the name pill and the background. Um, but I like what they did here. This is number 267. So honestly, this is kind of a boring figure. Um, this isn't one that I would have voted for <laughs> for being in TBC. We already got Andor uh, from earlier in season one. Um, so I don't really think we needed this, especially if they're not going to do his compatriots that um, partake in the Al Aldani mission. Um, but it's not so bad if you can get past those just tremendously inaccurate legs. Um, it's really not so bad. Yeah. So I'll give you an up close look at the figure here. Um, 
it's nice. Uh, the hat is removable, so it just comes off like that. He's got a pretty nice head sculpt, as you can see. Uh, it looks like Cassie, and his hair looks a little bit like matted down from the hat, which is fine. I don't know if it needed to be removable, but whatever. Um, the armor itself, from the waist up, is good. It looks really nice. It, it does. Um, but it's when you get to the legs being inaccurate that, you know, kind of like, ugh. You can even see that texture from the shore trooper um, pants that he's got, which is inaccurate. Um, he does have a holster. You can see right there. So he's got his little blaster pistol that is uh, in there, which I think I can't get it out now. And it's basically just this little gun right here. For the articulation, um, you do get a ball joint here at the head. So, you know, the movement isn't bad. Um, the shoulders are a little frustrating, though, because it has those kind of shoulders where the armor kind of gets caught a little bit, uh, especially on the left arm. Like, it just, like, it's really, like, there's not enough clearance there to really pose it, so that's a little bit annoying. Um, for both of the elbows, you do have the uh, the ball joints, really nice movement there. Uh, wrists, this one hinges uh, forward and back. The other one goes um, up and down. Um, nice movement here at the torso joint. Um, the hips, well, you know, it is the older style because they are repurposed in the short trooper. So, um, you know, you do get the swivel uh, at the upper thigh. Uh, you do get a bend there at the knee and you can rotate it too. It's just not great movement. Uh, and then, you know, he does have uh, hinges there at the ankles, but no rockers on them. Here's a comparison of the two Cassian head sculpts. Um, as you can see, the first one has more of a beard on it. Um, the second one has a little bit of a five o'clock shadow, but, um, you know, it's a different head sculpt. I don't know which one I like better. Um, I guess they're both pretty decent, but, um, yeah, from some angles that this new one looks a little awkward, like it doesn't really look like Cassian like there, but from here it does just really depends on the angle. So in that sense, maybe this one's better. I don't know. They're both kind of boring. Next up, we have what is probably my most anticipated figure of the wave, and that is the clone trooper. Uh, in phase two armor and of course this is based on andor we did see these guys in andor um, which were actually costumes unlike revenge of the sith and attack of the clones in which they were all cgi i've been pestering hasbro for a new clone trooper sculpt for a very long time and we finally have one whether or not he lives up to expectation well we'll find out in just a moment uh, i really do like the packaging i really like the image that they use there it looks really great seeing that clone trooper uh, and then the yellow works really nicely. This one is going to be VC269. All right, now this is the figure I was most looking forward to in this wave. Um, if you go back and look at my Q and A's or my interviews with Hasbro at Comic-Con or at Celebration or you know doing the ones that we do online sometimes, I've been asking him for a while for a brand new clone sculpt because you know frankly it was time. Previous one didn't age very well and uh, they kept putting it out there. So you know it was really time for a new one finally. Um, it's really great that they were in Andor because now we have uh, this one. And this makes sense, um, you know, as, as a character from Andor that makes, you know, great sense for an action figure. That said, um, now that I have it in hand, mm, there's some issues here. Um, now, if you want a comparison with the previously released clones, you are in luck because I am going to do that. But I'm going to hold off on doing that um, for my next video because I want to do a really thorough uh, deep dive into previous clone troopers and compare them and figure out which one is the best. Um, but we will look at this figure nonetheless here. Um, so let's going to take a look at it up close. Um, yeah, so that helmet is is a little bit strange. Um, the visor is really like, like the helmet just looks kind of like squished, just like like that, like it got squished down. Doesn't look, it should be a little more narrow. And then the visor, I think, is even more problematic because it just looks really like squinty. Um, and it really shouldn't. I mean, if you look at like the card uh, or if you look at previous clone figures or I mean, any iteration of the clones really like, that's not what they look like. Um, so I don't really know why that is. Maybe it's because it's a removable mask. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what happened, but it's just not very um, accurate, which is really disappointing considering everything I just told you about really wanting a new clone um, sculpt. Um, but is it all bad from, well, from the neck down? No, it's not. It's actually really nice. It's actually really good. The color, as you can see, is a pretty decent white. Um, it may be a little bit of an off-white. And again, we'll compare in, in the next video with the other clones to see what, you know, what those differences are. But for what this is from the from the neck down, it is really good. Um, he is loaded with articulation. We'll get rid of these guns for just a little bit here. 
uh, and he does have the removable helmet so this just kind of comes off like that now the head sculpt underneath there is great very nice Tamora Morrison likeness um, and that's great but I don't know if we really needed the removable helmet because you don't see him in Andor and I suspect they did this more because of the Clone Wars um, you know which is fine but why not do a swappable head like they did with Bo-Katan um, that would have been I think preferable to this but either way um, it is what it is, right? So, you know, you get some pretty okay movement. It's not really like anything flashy. Um, of course, when you have the helmet on, it's, it is a little bit more restricted and the helmet goes on pretty easily. So there's not a whole lot there. You can turn it basically look up and down just slightly. Um, the shoulders, as you can see, so the pads are connected to his arms. So they don't really pose a challenge for posing but what i worry about is they're going to get warped they're going to kind of distort over time this one kind of goes under a little bit the other one kind of has a harder time doing that well i guess if you push it in tuck it in a little bit you can do that so maybe it's not so bad but i don't want it to leave like a crease on the armor either so you know i don't know if there could have been a better way to do that i don't think the previous versions there that wasn't really a concern um, and they had pretty nice movements. So I'm not really sure why they had to change the formula there. Uh, the elbows uh, are nice. So you do have the insert molded joint uh, at both of the wrists. You know, you get that too. So this one goes forward and back uh, on the right hand. Uh, that one goes up and down. Torso has a pretty nice, uh, nice movement. This is an upgrade from the previous figure for sure. Uh, as far as that joint goes, uh, he does have the uh, the nice barbell joints here at the hips and the armor does swivel independently from the actual hip which is really great. Um, insert molded joints there at the knees and then he's got the uh, rocker ankles down here so you know that's really nice that's what the bottoms look like right there if you're curious. Um, so really nicely articulated overall I think the shoulders you know I'm a little concerned about um, but everything else um, seems to be pretty nice. Uh, and I do like the aesthetics of the overall proportions. It looks a lot more like a person than the uh, previous release did. Um, so that is that is nice. It does look like a person wearing a costume finally, um, which is kind of what you know a lot of us have been asking for. That said, like I said, it's not perfect. I do have some problems with this helmet. You know, it could have been so much more accurate. So I find it kind of frustrating that it looks the way it does. Um, but what are you going to do? All we can really do is give you a review of what they actually made. Um, so he does have the two clone pistols. Here's the blasters. Here's the smaller of the two. Um, they're both brand new sculpts. This one here is really long. I don't really know why they needed to re-sculpt these. I thought they were fine before. Uh, maybe they just look a little different in Andor. I don't, I don't know. This gun is also like really, really gummy. Um, and this one in particular, like I said, it just looks, you know, really big. If you look at the figure here, um, this gun is just... It's just kind of big, you know, I, I think they looked a little bit better the previous release. Um, you know, they could have just carried, carried those weapons over, but you know, new figure, new weapons, I guess. So it is nice that we have both of these blasters in one pack. And then last but not least, we have a long requested figure update. This is Admiral Piet from Return of the Jedi. Uh, and of course you do have that 40th anniversary logo on the top left. And it's interesting because Admiral Piet, most of us associate with the Empire Strikes Back. Uh, of course, he does appear in uh, Return of the Jedi as well, and that's what Hasbro opted to go with, presumably because this is the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi, but I do hope we get an Empire version as well. I really do like the packaging. I think that's a fantastic image of Piet. I love the Death Star there in the background. I think the red background is a perfect selection. And this is VC-270. You are in command now, Admiral Piet. Here he is. Um, brand new sculpt from the ground up. This is an excellent looking figure. Um, I'm glad we have finally a brand new Imperial officer body and we will certainly get to see reuse with it. What with Moff to Gerard and director Krennic. Uh, let's go and take a look at the head because the head I think is one area that they particularly did a really nice job here. The likeness is really good. Really, really good. Um, you know, I know some people have said that the hat's a little annoying because it looks oversized. It kind of does, but it doesn't really bother me as much as I thought it would. Um, it does come off like that, so you can see his head a little bit better. It didn't really need to, but it does. For better or for worse, it does. 
that head looks really good. The likeness is just really nicely realized. I like the way they did the eyes, the hair, all that it looks good. Um, the hat itself, you know, it, it's pretty snug on there. I'm not worried about it like falling off or anything, but does it look, make the head look a little bit oversized? It, it kind of does just a little bit, but it's not as bad as I expected it to be in person. It really is not. Um, you get some pretty nice movement with the head, really nice movement actually. Uh, he has um, ball joints there at the shoulders, uh, elbows, both of the wrists. So this time, uh, this one goes forward and back. And the other one goes up and down. So I've kind of been seeing a pattern in this wave. Um, the torso, it is a ball joint. Actually, it is a really, it actually moves better than I thought I was going to say it did. Um, yeah, that's actually not bad. I don't know why it clicks when you rotate it, though. It's kind of annoying. Um, as for the hips, it does have the barbell joint. So, you know, nice, nice there. Here at the knees, you know, you do get not a, not a full 90 degrees, but it's it's fairly close. Um, and then you can rotate them as well. And then you do get the rocker ankles. So um, this is as well articulated as I could have reasonably expected it to be. As for his weapon, well, he does come with his noisy cricket. I mean, his little imperial gun that he's got there. And he's got a holster for it, as you may have noticed. No, he doesn't. Ha ha ha. But he can hold it. So, yeah. Did he really need this? He didn't have it in the movie. No, but hey, I'd rather have extra accessories than no accessories, uh, if that's possible, and it was possible here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so there you have it. This is the latest wave of Hasbro Star Wars, the vintage collection. Overall, you guys, it's a pretty solid wave. Um, it is a little bit of a mixed bag, though, especially when we look at certain figures in this wave. Um, as far as the disappointments, well, Obviously, Cassie and Andor having the wrong pants, disappointing the clone trooper. I thought that was going to be the standout of this wave. It's Unfortunately, it's not. Um, just the helmet just doesn't look right. It just doesn't look right. And I have some problems with the shoulder articulation. Um, Starkiller, he really shows his age, so I'm really not too impressed. Um, it's good that he's back, though, for people that missed him. Um, I'm not, I didn't really need him, but, you know, he does have photo reels, so... I guess technically it is the best version of this figure you can get. It's nice that they're carrying forward Cal Kestis, which is a remarkably good figure. And the positives, well, the highlight of this wave is absolutely Hunter. He is the best figure in the wave. He looks great. He interacts perfectly well with all of his accessories. And he's just a highlight. And I hope that if they ever get around to the rest of the Bad Batch, which of course I hope they do, that those figures are given the same level of care that Hunter was. And again, we really need them. Admiral Piat is probably my second favorite in the wave. I'm glad that we have a new sculpt for the Imperial officers. It's just a really nicely done execution. He may be a little on the short side. Um, that's not really something I took notice of until just now, but um, I, I think he's pretty close to where he should be in, in height. He just seems a little bit short compared to those other clones right there. The removable hat, I would have preferred to not have had it, but it is... Uh, it's not as bad in person as I thought it would be based on photos. So um, overall, if you're new to TVC, obviously you're going to want all of these. It's weird that you can't order singles of anything other than Cal Kestis because, again, he's a carry forward. Um, and I don't really get why that is. Hopefully they'll go up for order soon because, you know, even though I'm not in love with the clone, I would like to get more of them. All right, you guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Like I said, we will be looking a little bit deeper at the clone trooper and comparing it to previous releases in figuring out which is the best clone trooper figure Hasbro has ever done. That'll be in our next video. For now, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you're following me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Hit the like button, leave a comment, all that jazz. And no matter where you're tuning in from, Ad in the Galaxy, thank you for watching Victoria's Cantina. Until next time, bye-bye.